uh, if you're if you're fighting for the Lord, and right, there's going to be trials. There's going to be trials. We talk about it since this morning. It's going to be trials. It's going to be tribulations. It's going to be things that doesn't go our way. But we're still on the journey. We're still heading to a city. The builder and maker is not God. Amen. I'm looking forward to that. I know when it's raining. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm sick. You're sick. I know everything's not just right. But even if we're not right, God's still right. Amen. Even if, if, if we're not, you know, if it's not going our way, God's still in control. Amen. He's still, he, he still, he still knows what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next year, whatever, 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 whatever it is, whatever's going on. He knows. Amen. I'm so glad that I know that he's in control this morning. So glad to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Hope the Lord's still sick. Amen. Pray for God to continue to heal and touch that body. We're glad that you're here this morning. Amen. All our visitors. Glad to have about our visitors. Then come a couple times. Glad to have uh, everybody this morning. Amen. Worship with us sing this morning.
Lord, we'll get him both just and have him out so he'll be sick. I know. And it's like, amen. You need to have him out this morning. Amen. Let's get him in the house of the Lord. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. So thankful he knows my name. Yes. Amen. 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 It don't matter if anybody else knows him, as long as he does. Amen. As long as my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <coughs> amen. That's all that matters to me. Amen. Yes. I don't ever have to have my name. As the song says, the light's on the marquee. Amen. It don't have to be written on some of the most famous books in the world. Amen. I used to think that one day my autograph was going to be worth something. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Amen. I used to think one day I was going to be able to sign a baseball and he'd go for millions of dollars. Amen. God had other plans. Amen. And I wouldn't trade this life for another one in this world. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for what I feel. Amen. Did you come expecting this morning? Yes. Amen. Amen. If you didn't, you're probably going to be disappointed. Amen. But if you came expecting and you came ready to receive, amen, I believe God's got something for us, for us this morning. Amen. 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 I'm not going to tarry. Go ahead and get in the Word of God. You have your Bibles in the book of Matthew, chapter number 14. <laughs> Had this message, was going to preach it. I say this message. Had a message from the same text, was going to preach it one way Wednesday night. And uh, I was over in the Sunday school department praying, and all of a sudden I heard something go. I said, Dear Lord, who in the world and what in the world was that? I walked out of the Sunday school room, I looked down both halls, I didn't see anybody. Couldn't tell where it came from. So I walked out, went out the front of the church here, walked around back, and this ain't Tanya, she's back here beating on the back door. And I want to know if I'd be all right when it's calling off church. I said, well, ain't nobody going to be here sick. It don't really matter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But I, I had this message, and uh, I had a message on the, along the same lines. Got here this morning, got praying. God woke me up this morning, started leading me in a different direction. I do want to preach to you what he's given us. Matthew chapter number 14, again reading there, verse number 22. Very familiar passage of scripture. Very familiar story. He I want to try to show you what God showed us. Get in these altars and let him work. Amen. And the book of Matthew chapter number 14, verse number 22, again reading. The Bible says, a straight way, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him on the other side while he sent the multitudes away. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be I bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. And they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Amen. I want to preach to you this morning on the thought, He is able. Amen. He is able. Stretch your hand this way. Ask God to know the remainder of this service. Lord, I love you this morning. I thank you. I praise God for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, I praise you. Father, we're able to be in your house this morning. I thank you for your presence. Already filled up this place. God, I thank you, Lord. God, for everything that's been done up to this point. I thank you for every song that's been sung. God, every word that's been spoken. But Lord, I ask you now. God, I know that I cannot in my own self or my own ability. God, deliver this message. God, that you lay on my heart. But God, I pray, God, that you would move and work. God, anoint us this morning. God, I pray, anoint every ear and every heart under the sound of my voice. God, to hear exactly what you desire to speak to us. God, I pray that you would move and work around these altars. God, that your will would be done, that hearts and lives would be touched and changed by you. 
And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory for everything that's done. For it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Very familiar scripture here this morning. I want to uh, try to lay a little groundwork before we get in back, back into our text. Uh, but when we, we start to think about Jesus and who he is, uh, we know that Jesus is God and there's two separate people. Amen. The Bible says, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. Amen. We know that that's the case. We know that there's, we, we believe in the Trinity. Amen. That God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. We believe all of those are separate. Amen. But when you begin to look at the life of Christ as he walked upon this earth, amen, you notice there that there are characteristics of God. There's attributes of God found in Jesus' life. Amen. As he walks upon this earth, as he, as he does miracles, as he works and, and moves throughout that, that time here on earth, you see attributes and characteristics of God. Amen. John chapter number 14, Philip asked Jesus, he says, show us the Father, and it suffices to us. And he answered, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Amen. When you look at Jesus, when you look at his life, amen, you're able to see the Father working through him. Amen. You're able to see it in, in the miracles throughout the Bible. That's not just Jesus in his That's God working through him. Amen. That's, that's the way we see God. That's the way that we're able to see God through those miracles. Amen. He's being um, uh, manifested through Christ. Amen. And I said all that this morning because as I begin to study through this text and begin to look through this sto uh, story, in this story I believe that we can find three characteristics of God. Amen. Being manifested through Jesus. Amen. As you begin to go through this story and begin to look there, <coughs> you find there in verse number 23, it says, And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. I begin to look at that and just begin to question in that scripture. Why did it tell us and let us know that he was alone? Why in the world would it put that in there? Why would it let us know that he's in this mountain but he's all by himself? He's already constrained the disciples into a shield and sent them across to go on across before him. And then we find Jesus here has went up in the mountain and he's praying but the Bible says that he's alone. And therefore that he has no idea what's going on anywhere uh, as a man he would have no idea what's going on anywhere other than what's taking place on that mountain. But here we find the first characteristic that I want to point out this morning is we find an omniscient God. Amen. And you, you know most of these, but I'm going to give you the definition anyway. The word omniscient means having universal knowledge of all things, infinitely knowing and all seeing. The Bible tells us there in 23 when he was alone, but how he knew that there was a boat in the middle of the sea that was being tossed about with waves. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning that sometimes your faith will take you to a middle of a storm. Amen. These disciples were constrained by Jesus. They were constrained into a ship and sent across the sea. And we know that him being all knowing, he knew there was going to be a storm. He knew there was going to come a time he was going to be needed. But he constrained sometimes in the middle of your faith, it's going to put you in the middle of the storm. But you've got to understand and you've got to know that in the middle of your storm, he sees you right where you are. He hadn't forgot about you. He hadn't forsaken you. He sees you right where you're at. Oftentimes we get in the middle of the storm and we think, what in the world have I done to bring this upon myself? It's not so much that it's anything. It's that God's got something he wants to prove to you. They were in the middle of the storm and sometimes your faith is going to put you there. But you've got to understand this morning that God had not turned His back on you. There's a reason for everything that you go through. There's a purpose. There's something God wants to show you. There's something God wants to prove to you. We find them here in the middle of this. I wonder what goes through their mind. What's, what's being talked about on the ship? It doesn't necessarily say at this point exactly what they're going through, but you can imagine the struggle. They're trying to keep this boat afloat. They're trying to make sure they don't go down and sink. And I just imagine many times you get in the middle of the storm. I've been there. I know what it's like. You get in the middle of the storm and you're fine. You're trying your best to figure out how you're going to come out on the other side. And oftentimes, if we're not careful, we'll get so focused on the storm, we'll forget about the one that sent us through the storm. We'll forget about the part that he put us in and send us across the ocean. Send us across the sea. There's a reason you're there. Just hold on. God's not through yet. Yes. We find an omniscient.
knows exactly what's going on. He sees exactly where they're at. He had not just let them go out there and wander aimlessly. Amen. But there's going to come a point in time that he's going to become an omnipresent God. Amen. In the middle of their storm and in the middle of the situation, I'm talking about a God that can take one step from the top of a mountain and be right in the middle of the sea. The Bible tells us there that in the fourth watch of the night, he came walking to them upon the sea. Amen. They didn't have any idea what was going on. They didn't have any idea that he was on his way. But in a moment of time, he saw them in their distress. I'm talking about the Bible. I'll say, and he climbed down off the mountain, and he walked down the sea, the, the sea uh, line there, the shore line there, and he began to walk out on the sea. All of a sudden, we see him in the mountain, and the next thing we know, he's walking on the water, going to where they're at. I'm talking about a God that's able to, to defy all of science. And Sister Aaron brought out this morning in Sunday school. He can defy every bit of that. He can take one step off. situation when you think you're all alone and you think you're by yourself. There's a God in heaven that wants to come to where you're at this morning. I'm not talking about a God that you've got to set up on a pedestal. I'm not talking about a God that they still worship and you can still find his remains laying in a tomb somewhere. I'm talking about a God that sits in heaven but at the same time can reach down and begin to work in your situation. I'm talking about a God that can reach down and in a moment of time speak peace to your storm. In a moment of time he can change your circumstances and your situation. You say, Brother Justin, I don't know the outcome. I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I don't know how I'm going to overcome it. Just hang on. There's a man that just stepped out in the middle of the sea. It's coming in your direction. If you'll just wait just a little while longer, he'll be right in the middle of the storm with you. Amen. He's an omnipresent. That word omnipresent means he's present in all places at the same time. What does that mean for Brother uh, for me, Brother Justin, just because he's over here working in Brother Scott's situation doesn't mean he's not back there working in Brother Justin's situation. You see, so many times we limit God to one person and one miracle, but all the while he can be over here moving in Brother Jonathan and Sister Shelby's life. He can be back there on the back row moving in Brother John Roberts' life. We think that he's just a small God. He can only move here and then he's got to go and move there. He can be moving all throughout this building this morning in different situations. You say, how in the world can God work in my situation when there's all this going on over there? He knows exactly what you're going through. He sees your situation this morning. And just like He wants to work for somebody else, He's here this morning to work for you. He's an omnipresent God. We can find Him to one situation. How do I know that? Because you only pray for one big thing. What are you talking about, brothers? Oftentimes, we don't want to bombard God. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I, I said, we don't want to bombard God. Yes, I don't want to take too much to Him at one time. I don't know if He can handle it. Come on. Right. Right. So, brother, just that's silly now that you say it, but is that not the way we right. act? That's right. Amen. Uh, we've got we've got those this in our church that are battling cancer. We're gonna take that to God and we'll worry about the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Don't get quiet on me. I said, we want to bombard God. We'll take the big things. God, if you'll heal this one of cancer, if you'll take care of this one of cancer, we'll try to get through the sinus infection. Yeah. Come on. Come on now. I said, if you'll take care of cancer, we'll try to get through the flu. We'll, we'll ride it out till it gets off. That ain't the way God works. If you'll come to God with whatever your need is and whatever your situation is, just as He's big enough to reach down and heal cancer, my God's big enough that at the same time He's moving in somebody's situation to heal cancer. He can reach down and heal you of a sinus infection. I don't care what you're going through this morning. I come to let somebody know that we serve an omniscient God. He sees you.
And you begin to look at this. You begin to notice this. Different things that are going on in this situation. There's a lot going on in this one story. When you begin to notice, at one point he's constrained his disciples, put them in a ship, told them to go on a cross. He goes up to a mountain to pray. A complete different scenario, different place of time. But all the while, he's on top of a mountain praying. He knows exactly what's going on in the middle of the sea. Yes. So, Brother Justin, I just don't know if I, if I can reach out and ask God to do this for me. Why not? I challenge these young people before over there in that CA hall, fellowship hall, I told them, so how come you want to depend on Brother Lamar to pray the big prayers? How come you want to depend on the, the Sunday school teacher to pray the big prayers? Yes. Do you not serve the same God? Yes. Yeah. Can you not pray the same prayer? Yes. So many times we rely on others. But God hears you just like he hears anybody else. Yes. God can answer for you just like he can answer for anybody else. Yes. So why in the world? goes back to that thing. I just don't want to bombard him. Amen. I don't want to put too much on his plate. Amen. But you know what God wants to do? In the middle of your situation, that back pain that you're having, that, that, that little bitty thing you think, I'll just take care of it with some ibuprofen and we'll get rid of it. God's just waiting for you to say, if you'll bring that to me. That's right. Yes. Uh, you say, Brother Justin, that's small. That's little. But God's just saying, if you'll bring that to me, I'll take care of it. I'll, I'll fix it for you. But he's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to be one. He walks out. I just wonder, had they not cried out to him in the middle of the sea, would he pass them by? I just wonder, as he walked on the water, surely he's walking by so that they can, they can see him passing by and hoping that they'll cry out for help. But should they not cry out? situation. Because he's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. But he wants to help you. Yes. And you're here this morning. You say, I've asked God for so much here lately. I feel like I have given him more than I ever should have asked for. God is here for you. And he wants to move in your situation this morning. It's not about being selfish. It's not about any of those things. But he's a loving and a caring God. And he sees your situation. And he wants to help you this morning. But you've got to allow him. Now listen, I'm not here. I'm not one of these that's all about just abusing the grace and the mercy of God. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. But when you're going through situations and you get desperate, God's looking for you to call out to Him. He's not looking for you to try to fix it on your own. He's not looking for you to try to work it out in yourself. He's looking for you to come to Him and let Him move in your life. We find here the one of the most, I guess, famous portions of this scripture is when we find as he comes to him on the water he walks by the Bible tells us that they're afraid they perceive him as a spirit then Peter calls out to him after Jesus says be of good cheer it is I be not afraid Peter calls out to him and answer said unto them if it be thou bid me to come unto thee on the water and he said, come. Peter, when he was gone down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Yes. I'm going to insert this here and I'm going to move on. If you can't have faith and walk on land, you're going to have a hard time having faith to walk on water. Amen. 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 Yeah. I'm going to say that one more time. If you can't have faith to walk on land, Amen. you're going to have a hard time having faith to walk on water. Amen. Amen. Peter said, if it be thou, if it's, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. And he said, come. Peter gets out of the boat. Peter begins to walk on water. Anybody in here to walk on water? I used to try when I was little. I'd get out there in that swimming pool. I'd take off running as fast as I could. I'd hit that water. Guess what I did? Sink. Very quickly. The 
Nobody here has ever walked on water. But for a small amount of time, Peter had faith that if he tells me to come, I can walk on that water. As Peter gets out of the boat, I've preached this before, I wonder what they're saying to him. Those that are in the boat, Peter, don't get out of this boat. You're going to sink. That's Jesus. You ain't him. Don't get out of the boat. The only way he's going to get to it is to get out of the boat. Yes. As Peter gets out, he begins to walk on water, but stop. His faith has got him out of the boat. His faith has got him walking on the water. But all of a sudden, out of the corner of his eye, he sees a wave. And out of the corner of his eye, he notices the boat's still rocking. <coughs> and the winds are still blowing. And all of a sudden, it's not out of the corner of his eyes anymore, Brother Scott. He started looking at the storm. He's beginning to notice the storm. He's beginning to notice the waves. And the Bible says, seeking, he cried out. That little bit of faith that got him out of that boat, that little bit of faith that had him walking on the water, he forgot about all of a sudden. See, sometimes, if we're not careful, your faith will carry you to a place in the middle of a storm. And if you forget about that faith that got you there, you'll begin to notice where you're at and you'll sink. Your faith brought you this far. Your faith has you walking on water. I'm trying to preach to somebody this morning. I said your faith has got you at this point. Your faith has got you walking on water. But now, you've allowed the things that are going on around you to distract you. And you forgot about your faith. You forgot about your faith, Peter. If he'd have just held on to what got him out of the boat, he could have walked all the way to Jesus. Yes. I'm trying to tell somebody this morning, you better hold on to your faith. Don't get your eyes on your situation. Don't get your eyes on the middle of your storm. Take your eyes off the wind and hold on to faith and keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Jesus reaches down, picks him up, saves him, and then he looks at him and says, Oh, thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? <clears throat> Peter, why in the world? You, the Bible says, and he walked on the water. The Bible does not say that he stepped on the water. The Bible does not say that he stood on the water. The Bible said he walked on the water. In order to, for it to be considered walking, he had to take steps. Peter, you have walked on the water. That's right. Why doubt now? That's right. What does that mean for me, Brother Justin? You've seen it done before. Yes. You've experienced it before. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. You've experienced it before. Come on. What's causing you to doubt now? You've been there before. You've been in the middle of the storm before, and you cried out, and God saved you. Why are you doubting now? Yes. Peter, you've walked on the water. Wherefore didst thou doubt? God's here to remind somebody before. Yes. You've been here. You've been in the middle of the storm before. Yes. And I've came through and I've never failed. Why are you doubting me this morning? Yes. I'm telling you, I felt this so real over here this morning. I was praying. I had another direction. I, I was planning on going with this message. God left me in the same story and moved it in a completely different direction. God come to let somebody know this morning. You've allowed the situations and the circumstances to seem so much bigger than your God is. But you've been here before. Why are you down now? Why are you questioning that? You've walked on water. You've had faith to bring you this far. You've had faith to get you to this point. Why in the world would you doubt now? The last attribute or characteristic that we find here 
is we find him to be an omnipotent God. Omnipotent, possessing unlimited power, all power. I read this story, and I have read this story many times. I've preached from this story. But for some reason, and if I'm going to start out what Jonathan said this morning in Sunday school. With my small mind, I never saw this, and maybe I just got a small mind. But for some reason in my mind, Brother Moore, I always thought that once he reached down and picked Peter up, the wind ceased at that point. I don't know why I'm sure. I probably heard it preached that it did. But for some reason in my mind, I always thought I had it uh, in my mind that once he picked Peter up, the wind ceased, the waves stopped. All this happened. And plainly says, than when they entered the ship. When he got in the boat, he didn't say anything. He didn't say a word. He just stepped in the boat. And the Bible says that the wind ceased. <coughs> Somebody's here this morning and faith brought you a long way. <coughs> Faith's got you to this point. And you look, and you've got your eye on the situation. You've taken your eyes off Jesus. You forgot about your faith. You ain't sin. You ain't backslid. But just the storm has gotten so big that you forgot about your faith and you've got your eyes off Jesus. But he's here and he's reaching. Yes, yes. And he wants you to grab his hand. Because he's fixing to step in your boat. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I know the situations are going on. I know there's different ones that's, that, that we know of that things are going on in their life. I understand it. There's somebody here this morning. You're going through things that don't nobody know about. And there's a God that's walking through this building this morning. Yeah. And he's reaching for anybody that's willing to let him help him. Yes. Amen. He's got his hand out. And he's got you by the hand. He wants to grab you by the hand. He's going to get in your boat. And when he gets in your boat, everything's going to be all right. I don't know who you are this morning. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. But Jesus is here. And he's walking throughout this building. And he wants to get right in the middle of your boat. And when he steps on, everything's going to be all right. All the winds are going to cease. All the waves are going to stop crashing on your boat. Everything's going to lay down. And God's going to speak peace to your situation. He is an omnipotent God this morning. He's all powerful. He didn't have to speak a word in the middle of it. All he had to do was make his presence known. All he had to do was step on the boat and the winds begin to cease and the waves begin to lay. This morning God's looking for somebody that'll let him get in your boat. God's looking for somebody this morning. Says God if you'll just get in this boat, I know that everything will be alright. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. But get a hold of God and get God in your boat this morning. Stand all across.